Tomorrow's Brain. This is a One School for All lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, um, at Estoril University College, which I would like you to watch um, by the 24th of October 2023, when we next meet. So we're going to talk about brains, what goes on between these two eyes of ours, or between the two ears, depending on your preference. Whatever else we do, as teachers, we're in the business of changing brains. Um, and not just what brains do on their own, like introspection or daydream or sudoku. Brains are involved in everything we, we do, whether we go go for a walk, um, whether we are learning to act, uh, to play music, to pick our nose, whatever it is we're doing, we are involving our brains, of course. Um, so our bodily ha habits are part of what our brains do and what we do with our brains. But brains change. You can change your brain. In fact, you have to change your brain. That's what living does. Um, and what you do to them um, affects your future history. And so the question uh, we need to ask ourselves as the makers of tomorrow's brains is what kind of brains do we want in the future? What kind of brains do we want our brain to change our, um, to share our lives with? So um, we need to talk about plasticity, which is, um, which is the things that we do which change our brains or plasticity means you can, something that you can mold. Um, something that you can shape and it's a concept used by a lot of neurologists and um, Catherine Malibu in her book what should we do with our brains um, talks a lot about brain plasticity so we're gonna have to get this uh, handsome young man to um, tell us a little bit about it so most of you have heard about um, taxi drivers and their amazing brains. Um, taxi drivers need to know streets much better than you and I. I get lost just going from home sometimes if I get um, if I stop thinking too much about Wittgenstein or work or um, Game of Thrones. Um, whereas um, taxi drivers know every street in wherever they're working um, and they know it extremely well. They can tell you automatically and really quickly what's the fastest way to get somewhere um, and how how long it takes to get there, uh, which means that. They're better than us um, and it, specifically it means their brains are better than ours particularly at um, going through streets um, and um, and that's not just an exaggeration people have actually examined the brains of taxi drivers and it turns out their brains are actually bigger than ours as well specifically the bit where they stay where they store um, maps and the map bit of the brain has been changed. And it's not because they're born like that. It's not because of some genetic um, advantage they have. They have changed their brains. And that's what we do when we learn. We change our physical brains. Well, thank you ever so much, Andrew. That is wonderful. We all love taxi drivers. Um, so we are the makers of our brains. We all know the ways in which we give our brain an extreme makeover. Taxi drivers study um, and drive, they practice, but we can also take drugs. Um, and in the case of addictive drugs, we can choose unfreedom. Um, but we can also experience trauma, whether that be somebody sticking a screwdriver into our brain um, or emotional trauma. We get old. My brain is different and it's not quite so good at specific things than your brain. That's why I use glasses. Um, we experience sickness, sickness uh, and we can willingly or unwillingly engage in various kinds of therapy. Even the number of calories we take in one day um, has a massive effect on our brain um, and our thoughts and therefore our bra uh, behavior. Being hangry is real. So it's not a question of whether to change your brain, but how to change it. And as teachers, we always have an effect on our pupils' brains. And that means we need to think through how we want to change our pupils' brains as well. So um, the games that we play, the contexts we live in, and the institutions we take part in, and the practices we have um, we have espoused, they all have an influence on our brain. So this is social. This isn't just what do I do when I'm on my own with these things or whatever it is behind my eyes. Um, it's, a, it's an institution. And games, whether they're social or whether something that we do on our own, um, have an effect on our brains. Um, so we need to talk also about our communities. And that's what Malabu talks about as flexible brains. So all brains are plastic, which is to say all brains can change. But um, you can also change in such a way as to allow more community or to submit to your community um, or to um, or to 
react against that community. You can choose to be good or bad at Tetris, in short. Um, so in many ways, we have the question, when we ask our pupils to change their brains in such a way that they will be able to adapt to our classrooms, we can ask them, are you going to be a hammer or a nail? Are you going to change your brain in such a way as to adapt to your community or your framework or your school? Um, or are you going to be a rabble rouser? Now, when you adapt to an institution or a game or a classroom, then Malabu calls that flexibility. But there are also brains that aren't particularly flexible, and you can change your brain in such a way so that it is not a plastic um, uh, plastic piece of putty that can be changed by others in order to adapt, but you can change your brain into plastic explosives. So we could change our brains in ways to think differently, to um, to unlearn certain concepts or to refuse to talk in ways that pe that might be familiar to certain people, to not use the jargon of our, our, our institution, to resist the ways in which we are governed, change the coding, if you like, of our games, of the games that we play together. What we sue, see and what we do and what we practice becomes our politics. And we can choose to have resistant brains, and that choice, resistant or flexible, will determine our future. So, um, we, um, we watched the film Elysium not so long ago, and it drew attention to the way that the um, technological developments of our society and the fantasy of infinite techn technological development um, is not just a one story about what we are going to be able to do in the future, but it is distributed. Technological development is distributed between different groups of human beings. Um, similarly, brain development is not just a discovery of new ways to be and have brains. It's more interactive than that. Technological and neurological development is political. Um, and with the arrival of big data, the population of our brains are being analyzed and studied and manipulated for marketing purposes all the time. When Facebook changes its layout, for example, or the color of its background, three million brains across the world adapt to those changes, or it's going to affect three million brains. And that's the level we are working at as teachers. When a government changes the national curriculum, it adjusts the brains of its herd. Now, for Malabu, the question is not whether to change or not, but how, whether we adapt to future changes or social changes, or whether we take part in those changes, whether we become the herd or the politician. You need to choose. You need to decide whether you are going to transfer, transform your brain and the um, brain of your pupils in such a way that they adapt to future conditions or future political choices of other people, or whether they transform their lives in such a way to adapt society, to transform society. It's an extremely uncomfortable proposition that we have this power to change people's lives in such important ways in the future. But not using that power, not having an effect, is not an option. Like I say, necessarily we are changing our brains and pupils are changing their brains every single day. You can't sign out of this transformational historical process. You are in this game. So let's see how you play it.